So the, the reason why we chose coffee was not because Brazil is the uh, larger coffee producer in the world, uh, but uh, uh, rather because of a series of observations which were done as a clinician looking at patients and noting that there was an re inverse relation between people who drank more coffee and a lower incidence of memory problems that were later diagnosed as Alzheimer's disease. So that catch my attention and uh, then I wanted to know uh, what were the mechanisms by which caffeine was affording such a benefit uh, in those patients. And that was the trigger uh, for uh, the research that I've been carrying out over the years. And uh, um, this has been an effort that I've been doing over the years, even in terms of training of clinicians, to show them the available evidence, which tends to indicate that for several pathologies where once it was thought that caffeine intake or tea intake, as a matter of fact, might have been detrimental, that actually it is not detrimental and very often shows benefits. So this is true for things like diabetes, cardiovascular disorders, several cancers also have a better prognosis in people who drink uh, uh, coffee on a regular basis. And this seems to be especially true for the area where I work directly, which is diseases of the brain, neurodegenerative disorders. And so the epidemiological studies have shown that uh, people who take moderate but continuous uh, doses of caffeine over the years, first it was shown that they have a lower incidence of Parkinson's disease, so it's a motor disorder. Uh, similar studies are available to show that the age-related memory impairment and the incidence of Alzheimer's disease seems to be lower in people who drink coffee on a regular basis. And more recently, uh, people or the incidence of depression was shown to be lower in people drinking uh, caffeine. And the work we undertook in my research group was to uh, provide a causal relation. That is, all epidemiological studies have the advantage of being carried out in people. Uh, the problem is you don't know if it is any particular uh, compound in coffee that affords benefit, or it is the fact that you go to the coffee shop, you talk with people, and that will make you better. So animal studies are very important to show that it is one particular compound in coffee, at least one, which is called caffeine, that affords the benefit. And we were able over the years to tackle the molecular target where caffeine is acting to afford this protection. As for all substances, uh, too little is often not enough and too much is uh, often bad for you. Uh, I would say to make it as simple as possible that an average between one to three cups of coffee is what we call a moderate amount of coffee intake. However, we are all different and each one of us has subtle, very subtle uh, differences in the molecular targets where caffeine acts. Those are called polymorphisms in technical term, which makes some people more susceptible to caffeine and others less susceptible to caffeine. So some people will feel the benefits with one cup of coffee. Others, such as me, will require five, six of cups of coffee a day. And some people are intolerant uh, to caffeine as well. So the answer is an average, although you have to keep in mind that the benefit is or should be looked at individually.